Welcome back. If you've seen the movie Sideways, you're going to enjoy this segment. Why it's supposed to be fun, but obviously we don't have a lot of background on it. It can seem to be somewhat overwhelming. At it time. can be. Ty Singman, the general manager of Divine, a new wine bar in downtown Fargo, is here with some wine basics. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Andrew. Thank you. Good morning, yeah. Chris. How are you? This is awesome. Thanks for having us on today. Oh, yeah. I mean, because we all have questions, right? When we're ordering wine, do I do this it can be or this or this? Yeah. So, where would you like to start? Well, that's what I wanted to do today was, was focus on a little bit about why this process. The, the kind of the process itself and why it shouldn't be intimidating. It's just a little process we go through and it's gonna be a wonderful process and part of the romance and the beauty of, of enjoying a bottle of wine. Um, first we'll start with a couple things. Um, when you're selecting a wine you want to mm -hmm. stick to something that you're comfortable with. Uh, if a, just because someone recommends them doesn't mean it necessarily is the best wine for you and the experience you're having that night. So if you're just starting wines you might be more comfortable with a, something like a, a nice Riesling, a little sweeter wine. Yes. Maybe then if you're moving up the ladder, you might start with a nice Grenache, something like this. this is a Tempranillo blend. It's got big dark fruit. It's not as dry and intense as maybe some French or Italian wines would be. Yeah. But work with your server, work with your local uh, off-premise uh, uh, sailor and ask them about the styles of wine you want and they'll help you pick. Now, when you're actually ordering the wine, you'll view the wine list. You'll pick basically a price that you're comfortable with, ask mm -hmm. a couple questions, and then narrow down what's best for you. Once you select the wine, We'll start this morning with a simple Cabernet Sauvignon from Chile. This is the, the Haras Husane. It's a beautiful wine. The young lady that makes this, her family comes from Italy, the Antonori family actually, and she moved down to South America and started making her own wine. But Nice. <laughs> so when the waiter comes to the table, the waiter, the waitress, the server, they'll present you with a bottle. They should mention the name of the wine, the region, and the year. And you'll acknowledge that. Now that's an important part of this process because what if they bring you the wrong bottle and it costs $100 when you wanted a $40 <laughs> bottle? So there could be a problem that we want to try to avoid. So that's the responsibility of the customer in that part of the process. Okay. Once they have it set, the server will then remove the foil, okay. keeping the label aiming at the customer, ideally proper wine service. Then I from there. I didn't know that. Yeah, you, you, there's some formality to it, some rules. Okay. You want to be able to have, present the label the whole time so that the customer is constantly aware of what they're having. Okay. The cork is then removed. And then at this point, you'll be checking the cork. You're not so much smelling the cork. Yeah. That's kind of a myth a little bit because it's going to smell like cork no matter what. <laughs> but what you want to do is you want to feel it. Is it mm -hmm. moist? Is it soft? Does it have a deep red line to it? If it has a deep red line to it, the cork is probably bad and the wine probably got exposed to air. So really? you probably know, right, you have a warning sign right there, there's a problem. If it's dry and crusty, there may be a problem also. So you want to search out, search out, a, 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 we're looking for a, a nice, firm, moist cork, okay? Okay. So then at that point, we would serve... Just about an ounce or so, half mm -hmm. ounce an ounce, mm -hmm. for a little taste. And then at that point, we'll, we'll all do this together, actually. Thank you very much. Sorry, it's a little early in the morning, but you know, some of the parts of the right. right? It's part of the job. Exactly. <laughs> so you'll see people do, they'll kind of gently okay. on the table, they'll, they'll swirl a little bit. Yeah. That process, you're looking for things called legs, looking for the sugar content of the wine. It'll, it'll just kind of give you an idea what kind of quality wine it is. Looking for legs. There'll be little drippings down the sides of the glass, and sometimes they come really slow or fast. And you'll see different wines have wow, different types of legs. Mm -hmm. So this is a beautiful Chilean. So again, okay. now we'll smell it. Okay. The reason smelling is to begin to just kind of get the body used to what it, the, the whole process of the wine, the, involve the nose, the mouth, everything, but also to smell if it's bad. Oh. You can save yourself a lot of hassle if you put your nose in and it smells like vinegar. How do you tell? Oh, vinegar. A, must, a musty basement will be what you're looking for mostly. Like a, the must of a basement. If you get <laughs> that smell, right? you, get, you, you start wondering, I think this might be bad. So then you, after that, you'll take a little taste. Okay. You see, I squish it around. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of exposed in all parts of the mouth. And then you really want to hold it in your mouth for about five seconds. So take the second sip. Okay. Now you fully expose your mouth to all the different nuances of the wine, all the different parts of your taste buds, everything, mm -hmm. and you get a true, genuine flavor. Then you would simply acknowledge the waiter, the server. Okay. Yes, the wine's wonderful. At that point, they would decant it and then serve it to everyone. How important mm -hmm. is it to let it breathe? So once <laughs> this comes out, it's poured into my glass, do I want to let that sit for a little while and breathe or just jump right in? You or? know, it, it, a, a younger wine will require less of that. An older wine will generally, an old, a 10-year-old wine, a 15-year-old wine will require more of that. The breathing process, process is nice because it, Allow some of the alcohol to evaporate off the wine and start to bring out some of the more subtle nuances of the wine. Yeah. That's why at Divine we decant all of our red wine bottles. Whether nice. it's a $21 bottle or a $200 bottle of wine, they're all treated the same. <clears throat> um, it's, um, it just, you'll, you'll notice what's nice, neat, neat about a glass of wine is it'll change in the 20 minutes that you're drinking it. The first sip is definitely different than the last yes. sip. And the beginning of the bottle is different than the end of the bottle. And mm -hmm. that's what's kind of neat about the journey of wine. You, know, you see this thing kind of 
blossoming in front of you. So for people that are really new, kind of walk us through what's the distinction between maybe a cab, a Pinot Noir, a Merlot? That's an excellent question. Um, when you begin with the reds, you'll start on the lighter end, you'll have your Pinot Noir grapes, okay? Yes. You're just you're gonna have a lighter color, and then you'll move up to something like maybe a, a Merlot, will be a little more fruity, and then you get into your Cabernets, they're more dry. Tannins, people use the word tannins, that's mm -hmm. that, that sensation you get like from a grape leaf on your, um, a grape skin on your lip, or maybe a, that, that little bit of dryness on your, te your teeth from a spinach or something, mm -hmm. that can be from tannins, it's the same sensation, that's, that's usually reserved for more, uh, more old world style wines, uh, you'll find tannins and stuff like that in some of the Californias and stuff, but they tend to be more fruit forward, dark fruits, and maybe some other segments we can get into some of the more specifics about the different classifications of wine descriptions and what they mean and stuff yeah, like that. But that'd um, be nice. the next step, something that's a real good crowd pleaser would be something like this Mal Malbec. That seems to be very popular now. It's a noble grape. It's considered um, uh, just a big fruit, lush. They'll, they'll range in fruitiness or jaminess depending on the price. The more expensive ones will get a little more dry, the mm -hmm. lower ones will be a little more fruity. But that's a great starter wine for people to have. On the white side, you know, I or two neat, neat things. The Riesling is really popular, Moscato is really popular. Yeah. You can find them to be very sugary, less sugary. I prefer a divine to have ones that are a little less sugary, a little more elegant, I consider them to be. Mm -hmm. uh, the, from Oregon, the mm -hmm. A to Z Riesling is a per perfect representation of that. And then you'd start with something there, but maybe move up to something a little dry, but not overly dry, like a Calia Tarantas. It's an Argentinian grape. It's a great summer wine, mm -hmm. a great uh, warm day wine. It's got a little citrus to it. It's not, it's aged in steel, so it doesn't have that deep richness that a, that a um, some of the Chardonnays may have, which, mm -hmm. which could really can be considered more of a, you know, like something you work your way towards later that you'd appreciate later. But as far as starting with whites, I'd say probably these type of range would be a good start. we got about a minute left. I want to give you a chance to talk about the Masquerade Ball for Halloween. And yeah. obviously give us a plug for Divine because I'm hearing great that. things about it. Well, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. You know, Divine's got some, we have Divine, we have Divine Events. We, we use the Bourse Gallery. We call it the Bourse Events Center in the evening. So we've had an idea to put together a Halloween party. We decided to make it something a little more better than just a party. Then we partnered with Gigi's Playhouse. They're building a beautiful facility here in Fargo. They just had their, 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 uh, their little walk. But that's gonna be November 1st. Tickets can be found at uh, divinefargo.com, our website, or um, you can come down to the restaurant as well. We also are now serving lunch daily from uh, noon from two to, from, from 11 to two. We serve a beautiful baguette, toasted baguette sandwiches, soups nice. and salads and have some great combinations. And I have to say, the, the cheese and the, the crackers and everything there, all the little plates are amazing. Thanks a lot. They really are. Yeah, and then we have our other menu where we focus on 16 different cheeses from around the world, different meats and yeah. combinations to make a really unique date, date experience, a fun time with friends, or even a nice business function as well. And I love it because if you don't know, you'll help. I, mean, think, you, I think you helped our table find a really good one, and we loved it. I mean, ask questions, right? Don't be afraid to ask yeah, questions. Yeah, we take a lot of pride in that part. You know, that's, that's kind of the experience at Divine. We want you to ask questions. We want you to be a little out of your comfort zone where you're free, yeah. but, but still in a, in a comfort zone where you're free enough to ask us, kind of, may I taste this, may I taste that? We, mm -hmm. we get plenty of taste of the wines. I'd love to educate people and share the yeah. new experience with them. And then the cheeses, my staff is very well trained on how to help you navigate those. Thank Beautiful. You. Thank you, Ty. Well, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yes. Thank yeah, you very much, absolutely. everyone. Absolutely. Okay, coming up just ahead um, with stores like Home Depot and Target dealing with hackers, we'll have some tips for you on how to protect your identity. Coming up.